The pectoralis minor muscle attaches from the coracoid process to the rib three, four, and five. So its attachment is here, deep to the pectoralis major. And then when the pec minor contracts, it will allow the scapula to protract and also it will allow it to depress. If the arm is over the head and you pull the arm down, then pec minor will also downwardly rotate the scapula. Pec minor underneath it will be the brachial plexus and the subclavian artery as it transfers to the axillary artery to the brachial artery. So if that muscle is particularly tight, you might have a thoracic outlet syndrome of some sort, as in you get some altered sensations to the arm. Pec major will attach onto the costal cartilage, the sternum area here, the clavicle, and then is a tendon approximately two inches wide that will go onto the lateral side of the bicipital groove or the intertubercular sulcus here. Its main action is, it's like a bench press motion, horizontal flexion, but then the clavicular fibers are able to flex you to neutral and the sternal fibers are able to extend you to neutral. Both fibers contract, it will be this horizontal motion. They can also internally rotate the humerus as well. The latissimus dorsi attaches onto the lower six thoracic spine, all the lumbar, all the sacrum, the iliac crest. There's a fascia here called the thoracolumbar fascia. It attaches to the lower three, maybe four ribs. There is a, an attachment onto the inferior angle of the scapula, and then the tendon of the latissimus rotates 180 degrees to insert onto the base of the bicipital groove. The muscle, when it contracts, will allow you to extend, normally from a flex position, it will extend you and it will adduct you and it will internally rotate. And because it attaches to the inferior part of the scapula, it can assist in stabilization of the scapula as well.